And I'd like to introduce to you our third candidate finalist today, Tony Tompkins. And he is the athletic director at Judson University in Elgin, Illinois. He supervises 15 sports programs with more than 330 student athletes. His prior positions include head men's basketball coach at Judson University and coach of a top NAIA basketball program at Missouri Baptist University in St. Louis. A national raider for NAIA two men's basketball, he has received the honor of Coach of the Year for the American Midwest Conference and at Judson University. He holds a bachelor's degree in secondary education from Missouri Baptist University and a master's degree in organizational management from the University of Phoenix. Please welcome him. Thank you. All right, thank you for having me. Everybody hear me okay? Okay, good. Uh, just thank you for this opportunity to come here. Um, the, everybody's been super helpful and it's been great to meet all, some uh, new faces as well today. And uh, just thank you guys for coming. It's awesome to see just the interest in athletics, which uh, even motivates me a little bit more. So that's, that's really a good, good sign to see. Um, my vision for the university, uh, for the Kansas City, Kansas Community College, is pursuing excellence in academics and athletics while providing opportunities and preparing student athletes for a four-year degree. Um, academically, it's the most important thing I can think of. Uh, that has to be first. Um, academics is um, key, and, and in order to do that properly, you gotta have faculty partnership. We do this very well at our university. Um, we, it is vital that we support our faculty and that we are on the same page to make sure that our student athletes are successful. Um, we got to have a culture of, of communication and being on the same page, having open lines of communication with the faculty, like I said. Um, I want to know what, if they have any concerns about any athletes that are going on. You know, I love seeing the athletes in the first two rows of class. You know, if they're messing up in class or not showing up for class, we want to have the open lines of communication from the faculty and make sure that we can work together to, to help the student athlete. Um, another thing that we do at, at, I would like to implement here is sending weekly emails to the faculty. I don't know if that's done here or not, but just a weekly uh, emails for whenever there's competition and knowing who's playing this week, whether they're going to be on the road or at home, and then also the rosters of the, of the, uh, of the uh, kids that are on the teams. Uh, another thing I'd like to implement as well is individual plans for every student athlete to graduate with their associate's degree. Uh, I think that's just the one-on-one -on -one touch I like to have our coaches and our athletic department to have. And coming to a junior college, you know, it's, it's very vital that you get your associate's degree before you leave here, especially for non-qualifiers. I don't know if everybody knows about just NCAA rules and all that, but if you don't have the grades coming in, um, if your ACT is not so strong, your GPA is not so strong, your class rank's not so strong, if you get your associate's degree, it basically wipes the slate clean. It gives you a new, fresh start. And I, and I think it's an easier transition for, for students to earn their bachelor's degree and it allows you to graduate on time. So the goal is to get your associates here, get your bachelor's degree so you can graduate on time because there are some schools, NAI and, and some smaller D2s and, uh, for the NCAA, that they may not pay for your fifth year, okay? So time is money and I wanna make sure that we can have a, a plan in place where you can graduate on time with a four-year degree. Um, Sorry about that. Uh, set some new standards for study time and tutoring time at the Student Learning Center. I was informed that we have a really good student uh, learning center here. This will be based on core classes and cumulative grade point average. All new students will attend eight hours of study hall per week in their first semester. Um, after the first semester, study hall hours will be determined by the GPA. Any of you guys have a 3.5 GPA here? All right. Obviously, these ladies know what they're doing, okay? So we want to do, we want, that's good. So we want to reward their work, and they always have good time management skills. So it's kind of based on a reward system. They have a 3.5 or a, above. They don't need to go to study hall. If the coach comes, just comes to me and says, hey, my team's going to go to study hall no matter what, hey, I'm all, I'm all for it. A 3.0 to 3.49 GPA, four hours per week. 2.5 to 2.99 GPA, eight hours per week. And uh, if you're below a 2.49, then it's going to be 12 hours per week. And this would be monitored by the coaching staff, communication with the Student Learning Center, and I, that would be reported to the athletic director. Part of the vision that we have 
is why I want to have an athletic department GPA of a 3.0. Okay? If we can do that as a department and our kids are averaging that, it's just going to create way more opportunities for the student athlete. You know, the goal is they want to go to a different college. If they have a 3.0, it's going to be the difference between you and maybe another student that has a 2.2 or a 2.5. You know, as a four-year coach, if I have the same type of athlete, very similar, similar background, if I see they have a 3.2 GPA and the one that has like a 2.3, where do you think I'm going to go? Okay, the one with the 3.2. Obviously, they, they, they know what they're doing. They they're, have good time management skills. They have a great work ethic. Okay, academics are important to them. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Missing a slide here. Okay, class attendance. All right, we'll coincide with the rules of the college. Um, if they don't, if you guys do not have a student policy just for uh, athletes, for student athletes, I'd like to implement one. Uh, we have one at our university that works out very well. Um, it's just making make sure our students are accountable, making sure they're going to class. Um, if they're not going to class and they miss, uh, let's say the, you're allowed three excused absences, you know, now you're up to your four and five, then there's going to be some cons consequences. You're not going to be able to participate. You're here to go to class. You're here to participate in class. And I want to make sure that that is part of what we're making sure that students are being held accountable to. Um, player coach contact. Uh, basically team practices, individual workouts, you know, weight training, uh, tape sessions, anything you can think of basically. Uh, this would be better adjusted to serve our athletes. Obviously I want to get our coaches input and feedback on that to find out how many hours during the season that they are using each week um, in terms of player practice time. Um, this would not include study hall times or any type of community service projects. We're just talking on the court stuff, preparing to uh, make your sport better, your, your team better. Um, I understand that there's eight hours per week for preseason and postseason, but I want to make sure that we can possibly limit the amount of hours uh, throughout the week to better serve. So everybody needs a day off. I was a player, you know, I want to make sure that people have time to have a day off to recoup, recoup your mind and your body and also have that time to prepare for in the classroom. You know, you got study halls, you got projects going on, you gotta have that time, okay? Um, so like the overall vision is uh, for academics is that we want our former student athletes to return to our community and serve in their respective fields. I've had the pleasure of coaching a lot of just strong young men that they would come to me, graduated from a, a junior college like Illinois Central, um, there's another one in Sauk Valley. A lot of kids would come to my program. They would leave here. Uh, they would graduate with their bachelor's degree, and then they would go back to their community that they came from. That's exactly what I want for you guys um, as, as student athletes. I want you to graduate from here as associates, go get your bachelor's degree, okay, and then come back to this area and serve our community. That is the overall goal for our academic side, and make sure that you're in, um, you can give back to the community that's invested a lot in you, okay? Athletics, okay, I, I believe the vision can only be accomplished with the right type of leader in place. I wouldn't be here if I didn't think I'm that, that type of leader. And uh, I have a vast variety of experience. I played at the junior college level and the four-year level. Um, I've been an admissions counselor at a university. Um, it's helped me with recruiting strategies and what type of students to look for. I've been an assistant coach. I've been that buffer between the, the player and the coach. And been able to have, uh, and also a head coach for nine years, um, assistant athletic director, and now athletic director. All that experience has just really helped me within my decision making making process, as well as just you know putting a vision together. Um, it's just really been uh, a blessing, just the experiences that I've had, and have people invest in me as well. Uh, I'm a student-centered type of person. Um, that's why I'm here. Um, I want to make sure that I'm easily accessible to the student athletes. I want you, to, if you guys have, want to ever meet with me, shoot me an email, I'll be there. Okay? I want to have that open door policy where the students can come to me if sometimes if they feel like they can't go to somewhere else. Okay? If you do have a problem with your coach, I'd like to see it, you handle it with your coach first. But obviously, if that's not working, then, then come to me and we'll, there's a whole policy I have put in place and it's a little bit bigger than what we can have time for here. Um, my decision process is going to be based on what is best for the student at all times. I'm not going to settle and say, well, it's not exactly what you want, but it will it'll be best for what you need. Okay? And that's going to be my decision making process. I'm always looking at two ways to improve as a leader and to enhance the department. Um, I have a strong network of athletic directors and coaches. I always, we always bounce uh, 
emails back and forth about, hey, what are you doing here? What are you doing there? And the feedback has been a really, really good opportunity for me to grow as a leader and also to help each other out, uh, my, my colleagues out. I uh, want to raise the standard of accountability of current coaches, staff, and athletes. Um, I think that's always a never-ending process. You always want to get better. Um, we will follow all the policies set by Kansas City, Kansas Community College, without a doubt. And we're going to follow all the rules and regulations set by the NJCAA and the Jayhawk Conference. Uh, there is an NJCAA compliance exam that is on the website. You know, I'm going to have the coaches do that uh, annually. You know, whenever we have a new hire, we're going to make sure that they, they can pass that exam properly. Um, we'll also do end of the season evaluations. I want player input, evaluating your coach. You know, I want some feedback on that. And then I'll also be observing the coach and we'll have evaluations at the end uh, to make sure that we're holding uh, everybody accountable. Um, serving the coaches, that's why I'm here as well. I want to make sure that I want to try and meet the needs that they have in order to make sure that they can build a first class program, nationally ranked program. That's what, that's what we want. And I, I do that by building relationships with our coaches. It's not going to happen overnight, you know, but I want to make sure that I'm available to them. Uh, we're going to have a lot of staff meetings, working on issues, trying to talk about recruiting, possibly better fundraising ideas, better scholarships, what can we do to always get better. I think over time that's going to just really help. Um, currently what I like to do also on road games, you know, uh, Coach Lee went down playing Dallas in baseball. Uh, I have our coaches call me after every away game because I'll be at the home games. But on the away games, I want them calling me and letting me know if there are any issues or how they did, any, how, how's the team doing, just kind of always get a feel for what's going on. So just constant communication with the coaches. Uh, I want to build relationships across campus and the community and be fiscally responsible. If, they, if I have a budget that's given to me by the, uh, the college here, we're going to hold to it. Uh, that's my responsibility as the leader of the department to make sure that our coaches and the department are, are fiscally responsible. I apologize, I missed one, one thing there. Uh, there we go. Um, next is the coaches. I mean, they're on the front line, front lines of, of all this. We've got to have solid coaches. Um, they've got to be student-centered. Okay, they're not here to, to, you know, just strictly focus on their sport. Okay, if the only thing you learn is how to, how to hit a baseball or softball better or score a basket, and that's the only thing you learn here, okay, that's not the right coach here for me. Okay, that's not the right coach I want in our program. They've got to be student-centered. You guys got to be number one. Um, I want them to be passionate about their sport and their players, professional at all times, on and off the court. That's what I'm going to expect from our coaches. Recruit student athletes that want a four-year experience. Okay? If we recruit somebody that can jump out of the gym, but he doesn't want to go to class or do anything, we don't want them here. Okay? We, want them, we want them to graduate with their associate's degree. Uh, and also prepare them for a four-year experience. Putting time in, skill development, game preparation, standards of conduct, uh, there's a standards of conduct, the six pillars that are in the, the Jayhawk Conference, the trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and good citizenship. I expect our coaches to model that for our student athletes. And I also want the, our coaches holding the student athletes accountable for those uh, six pillars. Overall athletic vision, uh, just a term of athletics, is that our athletic vision is what we want our sports programs to be recognized at a national level and our coaches and athletes to perform with honor and integrity. You know, that just kind of sums it up. If you guys, if we're doing this properly, we're going to have national championships and coming our way and getting the right coaches in place. And I believe you really have the opportunity here at, at Kansas City, Kansas, uh, sorry, Kansas City, Kansas Community College. Um, just in my short time here uh, from my last interview, I uh, saw some growth opportunities. Um, I want to explore opportunities to serve our community um, in terms of service projects and uh, possibly getting more sports camps. Anything we can do, we have some decent facilities. I think we could possibly do that. Um, addition of sports, uh, men's and women's tennis, possibly men's and women's cross country, um, just allows opportunities for more students to get involved and allows opportunity for scholarships to a four-year college or university. Uh, improvement of the athletic website. Uh, I don't want to make anybody mad in communications or anything, but um, website is a key, okay? It is a key in recruiting. It's a key in marketing. Um, our, our current athletes, if I'm a four-year coach, I'm going to look up this website. What information can I get on you guys, okay? And that's, that's very vital and, and it also could also generate some revenue for, for scholarships. Uh, facility improvements, uh, field house expansion, 
uh, indoor practice facilities for soccer, baseball, and softball. Um, again, I think this could serve our community as well, generate revenue for scholarships, and obviously big term goal would be I would like to host a national championship. So that is all I have for this overall vision. I want to thank you guys for coming. Again, it's good to see the support of uh, the athletic department, and uh, I'd like to take any questions that you may have. You uh, have appeared to, to, to uh, progress up to the athletic director position. What mm -hmm. has intrigued you about the Kansas, City, Kansas Community College you want to move from where you are mm -hmm. as an athletic director to come here? Okay. Um, first is the community here is very similar to where I'm at in Elgin. And I'm going to be totally honest, I was honest on my, when I filled out the, uh, the resume. Uh, we had some changes in our, in our institution. We lost 40 employees uh, at the end of October, and uh, there were some changes going on there. Um, unfortunate, my boss was let go, and uh, when this job came up, I was like, well, I better apply just in case, just kind of uh, just prepare ahead of time, you know what I mean, because I got three kids, I want to feed my family, you know, so. Um, but during that time, uh, I was able to keep my job, but my job description changed a little bit. Uh, for next year in the fall, if I do stay, they want me to coach uh, men's and women's track uh, and women's and women's cross country and also do all the athletic director responsibilities with, like I said, we got about 330 athletes. And um, it's also the reason why I'm wanting to look into elsewhere, it's a family move. You know, I, I got three kids, so I want to make sure that I have that time available with my kids, but also a professional move and for the student athletes. It's not fair for a basketball coach to walk over and try to do track and field. Um, I can't give them what those, st those student athletes need. And um, so this job came open and that's, that's, that's why I applied, so, yeah. If you did get this job, would you move into this community or would you move somewhere else? I would have to look at it, I would, really, I would look at the, um, it's very similar to what I talked to the coach here. Um, I live in Belvedere, which is very similar to Rockford area. This is a very similar community. I talked to my wife this morning you know, I'd like to look in, in the Wyandotte County to see if, where we at, where, where we could live. Haven't even really done that yet, you know, um, but obviously I'm going to be based on, on school districts, you know, what's going to be a good school district for my kids, and we're somewhere we can get plugged in our community, so, yeah. I got one more question. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, how do you plan on bringing uh, more finances to this college? Um, I spoke a little bit in my interview. Uh, there's there's ways you can do that by um, you can you can host some events, but there's also I would like to possibly start like an athletic club, um, getting some different donor do donors. Um, I currently work 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 with a Northwest Sports Commission that's just in Elgin, and what we do is we it kind of basically you're with the chamber and the and the work with the park district, trying to get outside business uh, to come to this community and. Uh, we make a little bit of money off of rentals. Our, our facilities are busy all the time and uh, we raise some really good money. I think we probably raised in terms of rentals, but also like a letter campaign that we did for like alumni and connections of student athletes. We're probably right around $75,000 last year. So, yeah, that's, that's all right. Keep it coming. I'm really good. I'm good. Uh, you keep, uh, in your statement, you keep saying that uh, you uh, want to recruit to build for a four year four-year uh, experience, four-year mm -hmm. experience. Yep. You know, to me, I'm kind of touchy about that situation because mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with the two-year experience neither. No, there's not. And this is a two-year college and we right. should be pushing for that. We should be able to get a two-year degree mm -hmm. from uh, KCK during the college, which I am alumni from this college. Right, right. And I do have a two-year experience from this college. Right. And I make pretty good money. I make right. about 75000 a year with two-year experience. Right. So um, that's fine. You know, okay. Four year experience. You, you, if you push Ab for yeah, two years, absolutely. But I'm talking about a student athlete. Right. If I'm going to take a poll here, who wants to play four years? I guarantee you, 99% are going to say I want to go play somewhere else four years. You know. Oh, you know. So. Take that poll. Yeah. So that's fine. I know that poll. Yeah. So <laughs> there, there's there's quite there's quite a big because uh, I know when I played. You know, there are quite a few people that I went to a junior college and I graduated. I want to go to a four-year university and compete. Well, I'm you just know. saying, I yeah. just know a lot yeah. of kids that play two years experience and they mm -hmm. get, they, some of them hate their coaches. Uh, just, right. And they get burnt out. Absolutely. They get Absolutely. burnt out of the practice. They get Absolutely. burnt out of this. They get burnt, and some of them yeah. just get their two years and they like, they go to other colleges. Because I know yeah. a lot of kids in 
you on KC right now, KU right, right now. Right. They play ball, but right. I understand. They went to these colleges and just says, yeah. wanted to be a student now. Right. And there's that's totally okay with that. But you're still you're still preparing them for that four year degree. All right. That's okay. Preparing them for four year degree. Yeah. If they want it. But, well, yeah, but they don't get it. That's their choice. You can't make a horse to drink. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So. You can leave them to water, but you can't make them drink. You know, so but all it is preparing them. We can't force them to do anything. I well, give them opportunities to do that. Okay. You know, but if, with my experience that I've had, you know, kids want to play at a four-year if they can. If they can't, then yeah, they, they, then they won't. But we can't force them to do that. But the preparation is yes, we want to prepare them for that four-year experience. Okay. You yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, good afternoon. My name is Sean Barrett. I'm the director of the Student Advisory Center. Uh -huh. How does academic advising for student athletes work at your current campus? Right now, I've had two different experiences. Um, when I was at Missouri Baptist, I was hands-on, um, hands-on with, with all my players and knowing their majors, what, the, what it looks like, and making sure that they are on track to what they need to do to graduate. Where I'm at currently, uh, it does not work as well with the faculty that we have right now. They want to have, they want to hold all the all the information and share it a little bit with with uh, with the coaches. It doesn't really work so well. The coaches get a little frustrated uh, because there have been some mistakes where we felt that if we were in, involved in the process, that we could have we could have made sure that you know the student would have graduated on time. We, there was a couple mistakes where, where kids went an extra semester and they really shouldn't have ne needed to. So I'm more of I'd rather have. I'd rather have input as a coach and have our coaches input and making sure that they're working with the faculty to hold on to make sure the student athletes are you know, on the right pace and right track. How would you see that for our campus? We have kind of a centralized advising system with mm -hmm. assistance of faculty and then we have faculty coordinators that do the advising for their mm -hmm. programs. Mm -hmm. So understanding that model here, how would you like to see advising done for student athletes? Is there, a, is there a way that the coaches could get involved? Could you see that where you sit down with the coach with that student and say, here's our plan. And a student that comes in with a, maybe a low ACT and they may have to take some uh, summer classes, winter classes, you know. That's, that's how, how I look at it. Not as we're going to take your job away from you, but we want to work with you in order to get the student athlete. That's 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 all I want to have happen. Is just that working Apparently together. Apparently, it's kind of a combination of both. Yeah, but I would love to see, continue that and see that going. Yeah, I really want the coaches' involvement because they're they can they're with these students a lot of hours during the week and can really help them get on the right the right track. So, thank you. thank you. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Anthony. My name is Robert Overson. I'm with the Student Advising Center. Mm -hmm. uh, how do your student athletes stack up academically with graduation and being academically eligible? At my current university? Yes. Um, we have our average ACT is probably around 23 to 24, and uh, our student athletes uh, are right around that range. We got architecture majors, pre med. Uh, they do very well in the classroom, and they get placed in the, in the job market very well. Um, so very high academic standards. There, we have a standard that I am currently trying to fix right now, uh, that if a junior college athlete comes in or a transfer, let's say they have their associate's degree, um, they come in at a 3.2, okay? At our university, it's, it, it's, it's not really conducive for a transfer, and that's what we're, we're fighting with that with, uh, with our provost right now. Um, we have a new provost, and he's totally on board with it now, but in the past, so they would come in with like a 3.2 right around there. If they have, and we are also on a different grading scale. So if like a C minus, if you have a C minus average, you're below a 2 up. Okay. So we're also working with that. So let's say if a kid comes in as a transfer, they get all C minuses because uh, they happened to me one time with my players. He was taking, he was taking uh, trigonometry, uh, biochem, um, and there was another class he took. He got C minuses and he couldn't play second semester, even though his cumulative was fine NAIA wise. Um, it wasn't good enough for Judson where we were at, and so the kid couldn't compete. And it was, it was a shame because here he is taking high-level classes, doing exactly what he needed, but there was no type of type of incentive to, to help him with that. So if he would have, you know, taken his cumulative, he would have been able to play. So that's that's one thing we've been really, really hammering on trying to get that fixed. So, but it's yeah, it's a really, really strong academic school. Tell me, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Head softball coach mm -hmm. Tillery, um, and as a new athletic director with no prior relationships with any of the coaching or the staff, 
um, how are you going to bring all of us together in line with your vision mm -hmm. um, to, to better the community and the college? Right. Um, I'm a pretty flexible leader, honestly. Um, there are some things that I'm not going to budge on that's following the rules, you know, like by the conference, all that stuff. But in terms of, I'm not, I'm not going to run your program. Um, I want you to run your program, but just also just have constant communication with you of what you need um, and just really trying to develop a relationship with you. Like I said, it doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, I got to build trust with you. Uh, you got to build trust with me. Um, that's really try to, what I'm going to try and do. It's going to take some time, you know, but um, I think I'm going to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, like I said, staff meetings, just talking about what we, our, our vision is and what we can do here to improve. And, you know, I'll be, I'll be honest, if, if people don't buy in, and are, then they don't need to be here. You know, because if, if they're really not student-centered and, and doing what we're trying to do, make sure these students need to be prepared, yeah, I mean, it may be time for them to go. You know, but in terms of just, you know, developing relationships, it's going to take time, but I, I think I do a really good job with that. And uh, do whatever I can to, to make you have a, a winning softball program. So, there's somebody back here. Yes, ma'am. What the organizations do you do your community? Currently, I'm not involved. I, I, my, my church, we have a, a small group um, that we're involved in. Uh, nothing in terms of like organization. I'm not a, a member of any organization. Um, I do work with, like I said, the the Northwest Sports Commission in terms of trying to get business to the Elgin community, um, in terms of using sports as an avenue to bring in extra revenue. Um, hotels, I mean, we get, you get a lot, of, a lot of business with that, a lot of people involved trying to, to build uh, community service projects, we, our students do. Um, we try to have them do at least one per year, and then as a student they do another one, so our students are basically doing two uh, per, uh, project services uh, throughout the year. Um, with my, like I said, with my church group, uh, what we do is we'll, we do a service project once a month. You know, like last month we just kind of collected uh, clothes for the for the nurse uh, that are that's in our school. You know, because I, I didn't know that a lot of kids get sick and they have, they have to put them in different clothes. You know, and they ran out. You know, so it was kind of a good need that we could we could serve our community in that way. So, you know, stay in the community. Did you did you visit the campus? Before you came for this interview, I know just a little. Bit. Uh, I just wanted to know. No. Or did you just come down? And I came down you? two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Did yeah. Two, two weeks ago, you visited the campus. Yes, sir. You visited the area. Yes, sir. You enjoyed the area. I did. Okay, that's what I'm. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You enjoyed my area. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the the legends place that they have out. That's part of this area. Yes. I mean that place is. I mean that is a. I was talking to coach here. I was talking. That is a huge recruiting tool. A huge recruiting tool, and uh, I would I would hope our, our coaches are using that. So, yeah, this area seems to be growing and, and being invested in. So, yeah. Um, how do you plan to monitor and regulate athlete social media interactions? Well, that is a tricky one. So usually that's it's interesting you say that because we kind of had an issue uh, that came from um, our dean that that found something on the, um, they were tweeting something, and it was actually pretty of a bad situation, can't get into it, but obviously, if you're, I gotta figure out what the policies of the school are. Um, if you are basically, if you're underage, and you're posting a, of a beer in your hand, you know, and we, and we get wind of it, there's, yeah, there's gonna be some suspensions, you know, so I would just say, I try to have a beginning of the season orientation, right before the season starts for all of our athletes, and trying to let them know that what you put out there on social media is accessible and public knowledge and to make sure that you are very smart about what you're posting and and letting other people post on your website and uh, so just kind of put that warning out there because as far as I know you can just kind of google somebody's uh, tweet messages and it'll show up you know so I just really would have, have uh, our student athletes really be smart about what they're doing so that's a good very good question though in your PowerPoint, you said that you plan on trying to add more athletic programs, mm -hmm. but um, currently you have like a big crowd of athletes already. How do you plan on like, making that work? With well, that we have? with cross country, well, you, we already have. I'm talking do about you have? Tennis. Okay, with tennis, that was something I would met with. Uh, I can't remember his name. He kind of gave me the tour. Uh, just with the tennis courts, I looked at it. Uh, as far as I know. 
if you don't have the locker room space and it's it's packed, I won't do it. I was just kind of on, on a looking on the outside and I saw tennis courts and I didn't see a team there. You know what I mean? So it's like there could be some opportunities for that. Um, obviously, if we do invest in some expansion of the facilities, you know, then we would definitely look in that. But if we can make it work, I would definitely do that if we can. Um, but I'm not going to sacrifice the sports that we have now in order to make that happen. So convenience-wise, all that stuff. How will you guys work to change the sometimes negative perception of student-athletes among Falcon and staff? I think what I talked about here, um, I think we can use that, uh, come together as coaches and the staff and really put some things in place to make sure that they're successful, make sure they're going to class. And what we talked about earlier with the faculty communication, I want to know immediately if, if there are problems going on and we're going we're gonna to handle them properly. Um, I believe that student athletes are very strong leaders and, and have that capacity to, to, because they're not only doing their schoolwork, but they're also competing and doing other outside, outside things, you know. So they have that leadership quality where they can do a multi variety of things, you know. So I think just being holding them accountable and just having that open lines of communication is, is key. And that's, a, that's exactly what I want from the faculty. So that's definitely going to be a high expectation for sure. Just continue to talk about it, and, you know. So we're trying to just try to change that culture, you know. Yep. I'm Gina Drake, and I'm one of the academic advisors here also. My question is about student housing mm -hmm. for athletes. Have you had any experience with that? How, um, how is it supervised where you are, and what would you do here to help keep our athletes safe and happy and having fun there? But do you guys have RDs here, like resident directors? RAs. Is there a resident director too that kind of is in charge of like policies and all that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We do we do the same thing as that we do with faculty. Um, we had an incident right. Usually all the stuff seems to happen right before the break. You know what I mean? So like Christmas break, there was an incident. RAs let me know we have a problem and uh, we handled that. Um, so just the expectations are are, are going to be high if they're found with certain things then they're not going to be a part of our program. Um, the expectation level that whatever is the policies are put in place, they need to follow those policies. Um, but again, just like with the faculty, it's, uh, to me it's all about communication and letting them know that, you know, this, this student athlete read this kid, he's not doing so well, he's causing problems. We're going to have that uh, a, a conversation with them, you know, and, and usually there'll probably be some discipline action if it's depending on what it is as well. But when we discipline, I also want to make sure there's restoration involved if there, if there can be. Um, so uh, using it as, always using it as a learning experience. So that, I, that's all I can say is I would just definitely, I don't know all the policies for the housing, but I'll make sure that our, our student athletes are following those. So. What are your thoughts on drug testing your athletes? If, I don't know what it is here, but we, are, we have a drug testing policy once a student gets caught with it. And um, like I said, the discipline action um, is usually probably about 21 days that they'll be suspended from, from participating and practicing. Um, but again, we want to make sure that usually if, if somebody's using drugs, there's usually a heart issue or something else going on you know, in their life to make, to, to let, make them turn to that. Not always the case, I understand that. Um, but usually there's, also, there's usually something else going on that's at the, at the heart of the issue. And that's what we really try to, try to do and make sure that we can find out um, what that issue is and get them the help that they need. And then after they go through a program, series of steps, you know, they'll be reinstated and probably tested periodically. What do you view as the major differences, both in philosophy and direction, between Champions of Character, your NAIA, mm -hmm. and the NJCAA's mission statement? Well, I read the, the, the pillars, the six pillars of the, it, they're very similar. Um, and that's why when I, I tried it when I was reading them now, I didn't want to say the NAIA part, you know, just because they are very similar. Um, but I think it's, I think it's stuff that they may not learn in the classroom. And I just think that they're fantastic uh, ways to make sure that 
we can hold uh, the, the student athletes accountable, but I think they're very similar in what they do. And I'm hoping, you know, that's something I want to institute here as well as making sure that, you know, our coaches are modeling that and the, and the students know what, what we're about with that. So, but they're very similar. They're very similar. Thank you. Um, you did talk about the whole study hall mm -hmm. idea. You said all students will attend eight hours of study hall for their first semester. Mm -hmm. And you talked about the time management. So with that, how is that involved? Because, like, say, the fall semester, that's for most athletes to have jobs, mm -hmm. plus on top of studying their three hours a week, whatever have already basic schedule mm -hmm. and we usually don't get out of here until like five. Okay. So you're just adding more time. Mm -hmm. Why is that? The reason why is because I think you need it. Okay. That's the reason why. Uh, because just any, any new student coming in, okay, it is a big adjustment from going high school to college and there's also another adjustment from going from a junior college to a four-year college. Okay. There is a, an adjustment period and we want to make sure that we are setting you up to making sure that you are are going to be successful. That's all it is. It's not a punishment. I don't I don't view that as a punishment. Yeah. Are you saying like just like freshmen in general, or you're talking about the whole team their first semester back? I would say like like if you're a freshman now and you're going to be a sophomore next year, <coughs> I would base it off what your core classes are right now. Okay, but I'm talking about a brand new student. Okay, coming in from a high school into the fall. Immediately they have eight hours. After that. Then, then we'll go through that system and make sure where they're at. If you have a sophomore transfer from like a, a full year university or another junior college, that very first semester, they're gonna be at least eight hours. All right, but you, like with eight hours, you would make, make it a team thing? That would be individual. What we, what we do is we try, it all depends on what the coach wants to do. I'm gonna give that freedom to the coaches. They can sometimes do it as a team. But we also, we send our students, some of them to the student learning center and they clock hours in there so we know, we get feedback from the Student Learning Center. Hey, uh, John Smith, he was in here for four hours this week. Okay, and when we worked on math and, and to have that communication, that counts. Okay, to me that counts. So that's on top of our regular study hall that we already That's have. included. <coughs> yeah. See, I'm a freshman and I came in and I had a GPA of 4.13, but I still have to have eight hours of yes. study hall? Yes. Even if I don't need to have that many times. We'll see, we'll see after the first semester. <laughs> you never know. It's not that bad, trust me. You should be studying that anyway. <laughs> so, I'm not gonna, I won't, bu I won't budge on that. Yeah. Because they're, you have a long period of day. Okay, I'm not saying that. 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's basically all students are. Do you have classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays? Do you have available on Tuesdays? Yes. We, have, we have classes every day. Okay, is there an hour in between you have class? To work? No, I'm talking about to go to study hall. Oh, yeah, but I mean. That's, that's all it's based on. So it's flexible. Okay, it's flexible. I think what they're trying to get at yeah. is that a lot of... It's okay. I'm all right. I'm all right with it. I'm all right with the conversation. With the softball, it's all good. We, we recruit a lot of, of local athletes, and a lot of these local athletes have to help their families. Mm -hmm. Money-wise, and okay. so they do have jobs right. um, from as soon as they leave here till 10 o'clock at night. Okay. And we, we do our own study hall, and the last, I don't know how many semesters we've been above a, a three and a three-two. Okay, and good. I, I just think they're trying, when are they gonna do that? Right, right. Now, what do you do What do you do right now? How many hours do they have a week? Uh, we're, we're up to like three hours a week. And okay. we do it as a, as a group, uh, okay. either in the library when we have a, a, new, okay. facility, a new building conference area that we do it in. That's okay. Long. Would that count towards our hours? Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, okay. All right. Yeah. This, it's not like it's not like you gotta do this and the coach is gonna give you eight more. And you got sixteen. Sorry about that. It, it didn't register with me. My bad. Sorry about that. Yeah. So. <laughs> So I apologize for that. It's not added on top. I have a question right here. Yes. I, I think you mentioned that the, the goal for all of your athletes would be for them to get their, their associate's degree here, mm -hmm. go off to and finish their bachelor's at a four-year college, but then come back to 
the Kansas City area for a career. Mm -hmm. it, am I correct? Is that what you said? Or yeah, like so, like I say, if, if you're a uh, want to be a police officer, okay, okay? they they want to they want to they get their associate's degree here, they go get their four year degree, and, and they come back, and then they come back. I think that's wonderful. I'm just yeah. curious, how did you go about implementing that plan in yeah. Elgin? Yeah, it's uh, I guess again, it's just from the experience that I have that the kids that I coached where they came from the junior college and then they didn't they didn't stay in Elgin. They all went back to Peoria area, Sterling Rock Falls area, and but they, they didn't stay in the Elgin area. They, it, they kind of brought them there just for a different experience, but they most of them went back to and where they lot, came from. I think a lot of our students may come from places all across the state of Kansas. Mm -hmm. So ultimately is are you instilling in them to go back and serve your home community mm -hmm. period or I would like them to be to here. Kansas City. Yeah. Serve the Kansas yeah. City. I would love for them to be back at the Kansas City area. That's what, that's exactly what I want. I'm mean, like I said, this is just trying to prepare them and put steps in place so that they do that. If they go back home and serve their community, that's a great thing too, right. because they're still part of us and affecting their community. But depending on where they come from, just kind of knowing the area, just I, I don't know the area a whole lot, but just seeing that the there's a lot of opportunities here that they can come back and, and, and work and serve in their community here. So that's that's the ideal, you know, as a vision, that's kind of like the broad, it's a broad step, you know, what you want to have happen, so. I think yeah. too, if I can add in, I think it's just a matter of making your experience here enjoyable that makes you desire to come back. Yeah. Mean, that that's my lovely sense. life, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, Tony, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, this, this community is, is very diverse. Mm -hmm. And, and so is the college. Mm -hmm. and can you tell me a little bit of your experiences with diversity and so on? Because I know, I know in our sport, it's, it's a global sport, mm -hmm. and cultural differences make a big difference. Right. Um, I think one commonality is that I think ath athletics in general really just doesn't it doesn't matter. It, it's a commonality that can bring different t types of groups together. That's, what, that's just been my experience as a player, as a coach. Um, I've coached kids from all types of different backgrounds um, and, and diversity. And just our common goal is to make sure that those athletes succeed. And they did that. Um, black, white, it didn't matter. Okay, they, were, they had a common goal. It's the same thing here. You know, you judge a person by their character and, and, and just try to develop that character. It has nothing to do with, with the, what color you are. It really doesn't. And that's just really just been my experience and in just in being involved in athletics. Um, it's just a great common ground where everybody can, can get on board and champion behind and that's just been my experience with that. So. Do you have any experience with international students? Yeah, we have international students at our university right now. Mostly, we did have some baseball, but mostly they're on the soccer end right now. Mostly soccer. So that's why I was asking him if he had some internationals because that is like, that is key in soccer. You know, you gotta have some internationals. So be successful. So <laughs> it's just what they're saying. Yeah. Uh, the, the needs for, for facilities is, is well documented. Mm -hmm. You mentioned different revenues, you know, rentals, advertising. Do you have any experience with like something bigger, bigger donors? You know, what, I guess what's your experience with fundraising? For yeah. Bringing you know higher profile. Mm -hmm. You know. I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm working with uh, my VP of advancement. Um, working on trying, we're working on doing the same thing. Basically, we guys did out here, not with baseball, but with a track and field and and soccer. So, I don't have of like, hey, I can go call this guy and he's gonna give us two million dollars. I don't have any experience in that yet, um, but I'm learning that that side of things right now. Um, but yeah, I don't have any major experience of how to, hey, I can go get us a brand new field house in two years. You know, nothing like that, but if we do have an advancement here, I want to be, I really want to work close with them to see what, what we can do to, to make that happen, though. So. Change is sometimes difficult. Mm -hmm. um, if you were hired for this position with all the great vision and things that you want to do, how would you bring that about? What, what strategies would you put into place to bring about the goals and to have the buy-in of your coaches and mm -hmm. the property and staff here? 
I think it's just it's just my leadership style. Um, and I think I'm pretty flexible. I, I can be just like, hey, there are certain things I said I will be really strict on. Like, hey, we're not going to compromise in this area. Um, but I'm also going to say, what can we as a staff do to increase our scholarships and give the coaches <coughs> input and work together with them on that? And then, but also, you know, talk with with coach like. I'm not going to run her softball program either, so it, it's going to be your your program. But I just want to make sure that that we're doing things properly. You know, um, I just think I'm, I'm pretty flexible in that. Um, just really working as a team. You can't be at a small college and basically have a uh, I would say a Big 12 or Big 10 mentality and say I'm only going to worry about my sport. Uh, it does it doesn't work. And you got to work together. You got to be able to compromise sometimes with practice times or whatever to make sure that you know coaches are working together. Our coaches do a lot of interaction where um, I think we have a lot of experience with coaches. They need to be talking with each other about how to, what they're doing. You know, we have a lot of that going on, and we, we kind of open that up with with when our staff meetings. So it's just a lot of communication, getting input from from seasoned coaches as well as new coaches that may have new ideas. And there's a lot of, lot, of, lot of just stealing of ideas from each other, you know, to implement in their program. And that's exactly what we want that interaction with our coaches. So that's how we do it. Um, what specific steps would you take to make sure that, obviously, not only that your coaches and your student athletes know who you are, mm -hmm. but also that faculty members as well as staff members who aren't over in the gym all right. the time, and other uh, community members know who you are and I, I want to be visible um, like if there is I asked uh, if we could see the Fine Arts Center you know and, and what they do here I want to be just wherever there's stuff going on I would like to at least be be there and if there's faculty meetings hopefully it'd be okay for me to show up at a faculty meeting uh, and be there um, you know that's why I'm here and make sure that I'm, I'm a good representative of, of the college here in our athletic department so definitely want to be visible if I do get here yes I, I do want to maybe talk to the chamber and, and different people leaders in, around the community to see if there's some stuff we can do to make improvements but it's it all takes time but yeah I, I want to be around yeah, um, I want to know the admissions department very well human resources very well faculty you name it student advising I mean I, I really want to make sure that we're all on the same page and it can't it, it doesn't work separately where athletics is our own entity you know and we're going to do what we want and forget everybody else it does not work that way um, we are an extension of, of, of the college and we got to make sure that we're we're doing things properly and being seen in the right way okay well uh, we've Thanks, gone Travis. a little bit over um, but minutes. thank you for your questions and your attention and uh, uh, let's go thank you Please turn in your evaluations. Thanks, guys. I freaked you out. That's okay. I like it. I like it.